Emeritus what? What is that, Steve? Emeritus, emeritus, emeritus professor. Emer, emeritus professor, right. In the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics and the Department of Nutrition at the University of North Carolina where he teaches first-year medical students. Uh, Steve ran a major con uh, cancer research program for, for many years. He's published over 100 papers and 12 reviews in peer-reviewed scientific journals as well as two chapters on nutrition for one of the leading biochemistry textbooks for medical students. And it goes on. He's been named Teacher of the Year several times. And he's just an incredible individual. He and Suzanne are not only very, very uh, uh, nutrition-based, if you will, but they're also uh, business-based because they're, uh, they are both master coordinators. So, Steve, uh, it's all yours. Well, thank you, Gary. And yes, it's, and you know, when we talk about keeping colds and flu at bay, it's not just the colds and flu we tend to worry about. I mean, you've read the headline, uh, you know, they're talking about swine flu coming back, bird flu, uh, they're talking about SARS possibly, I just heard that on the news tonight. All of these things may be making a comeback and, you know, other deadly diseases lurking just around the corner. We have no effective vaccines or treatments. And by the way, I love that picture of the kid kissing the, kissing the pig. That's not really where the swine flu comes from, but hey, it, it, it's, we can have fun with this. You know, and then there are the other serious things. Hepatitis C, HIV, the, the multiple strep resistant bacteria, multiple drug resistant bacteria, flesh eating bacteria, that's what those little critters are, um, and all sorts of bad guys out there. And finally, a strong immune system is our best defense against cancer. So that's what a cancer cell looks like, or that's what one kind of cancer cell looks like anyway. The thing to understand is that cancer isn't something that we just wake up and get one day. It's not like the flu. Cancer cells are created in our bodies every single day, particularly, you know, once you're over about age 21, our bodies start creating these cancer cells and we rely, we absolutely depend on our immune system to zap those cells. So the analogy I'm using here is it's kind of like a ray gun and zap, the cells are gone. So that's, that's our immune system in pictures. Now, you know, if you put this in perspective, something to think about is the bubonic plague. It was called Black Death. That killed 25% of the population in some parts of Europe. So it was truly horrendous. But you got to remember, that means that 75% of the people in those villages survived. And then there was Spanish flu who killed millions of seemingly healthy adults, but there are millions of others who never even had a sniffle. So what was the difference? Well, you guessed it. It was a healthy immune system. Those are bacteria, and that's the immune system wiping out those bacteria. And, you know, the other thing that I think is sort of intuitive, we, we've known it for years, because how many elderly couples have you known that have been married for years and years? Um, they, they've become sort of codependent on each other. And when one of them dies, the survivor often develops cancer within the next 6 to 12 months. Now, cancer is something you develop over years. You don't develop cancer in 6 to 12 months. So why is that? You guessed it, it's a weakened immune system. So we look at that same cancer cell. We've got the same ray gun, but now it's a weakened ray gun. It can't really reach the cancer cell. It doesn't wipe it out, and that cancer cell goes on to thrive and develop a tumor. So we really should think about those things that can weaken our immune systems. So poor diet is up there on the top of the list. It's not like there's any one magic nutrient that our immune system needs, but there are lots of nutrients that our immune system needs. And, you know, really only 3% of us eat according to the USDA recommendations. There's lack of sleep, and heaven knows Americans nowadays, um, something like 60% of us don't get enough sleep on a regular basis and then either too little or too much exercise can weaken our immune system. And hey, for most of us, it's not the too much exercise we need to worry about. 55% of Americans aren't getting enough exercise. And then there's overweight and obesity. 
Um, that also weakens our immune system, and 60%, 67% of us are overweight or obese. Um, and then there's the stuff in our intestine. You know, this, that's something we don't often think about, but bad bacteria or yeast in the intestine can weaken our immune, <laughs> immune system because 70% of our, of our immune system originates in the gut. And, you know, so if we have, for example, this is something we see a lot with kids. They're often given antibiotics for ear infections, and pretty soon they've got a yeast overgrowth in the intestine because of all that repeated antibiotic usage. And sometimes it's just because of the foods that we eat. And finally, there's the stress and grief, that overproduction of cortisol that results from the stress and grief. You know, that is what weakens the immune system. That's why when we talked a minute ago about that elderly couple, the stress and the grief was enough to overwhelm the immune system of the surviving spouse. So if we want to keep those colds and flu at bay, what do we want to do? Well, it's pretty much the polar opposite of the things I just talked about. We want to eat right. So that we have the food guide plate. It used to be the food guide pyramid, which to my way of thinking, was a much better way of was a much better way of, of, of keeping track of the nutrients that we need and on a daily basis. But nowadays we've got the plate, so that's what we're going to use. But if you go to www.myplate.gov and you you type in your age, your weight, your exercise level, your gender, all of those important things, you can actually get a pretty good idea of what a healthy diet looks like. We should get plenty of sleep. Somewhere around eight hours a night is considered optimal. Um, exercise regularly. And our goal should be 30 minutes every day. You know, and I've been working with some people on the Cinch Transformation Program. You know, sometimes those first few weeks, just 30 minutes, two or three times a week is enough to get started. And once you work up to that, then you can add another day or two. And pretty soon you can do that almost every day of the week. Maintain your ideal body weight, because we already know that obesity and, and, and overweight uh, interfere with the immune system, weaken the immune system. And then we need to think that it's not just the kinds of foods we eat. It's the pollutants in our food and the pollutants in our water that can, uh, that, you know, pesticides, herbicides, uh, PCBs, all of those things, they can end up weakening our immune system as well. So you know, we're looking for pure food, often organically grown food if we can find it. Pure water so it's not contaminated. Um, we want to focus on the positive. Now that's something I didn't talk a little while ago, but when we talked about stress, I guess it really is sort of the polar opposite of stress. Um, you know, I remember uh, Barbara Lagoni gave a, a seminar years ago on stress, and one of the things that she said was, um, you know, uh, don't sweat the small stuff. And by the way, it's all small stuff. So if we focus on the positive rather than the negative, we think of the good things that are going to happen instead of the bad things that could happen, you know, that's what really helps us. And then developing those support networks. Um, you know, again, there are many studies that show that the bigger your support network, the more people that you know who you can talk to about your concerns, your problems, and who'll give you positive feedback, positive support. Uh, the more people like that you have in your network, the stronger your immune system is going to be. And finally, you want to add a supplement program. That's to fill in the gaps, because remember, only 3% of us are getting the nutrition we need on a daily basis. And so we want to make sure that our immune system is functioning optimally. Now, let's look at the nutrients our immune system needs. And I'm going to go through a long list here. Uh, but, you know, when we think about it, it doesn't necessarily need, mean that we need a separate supplement for each one of these nutrients. But let's start with the B vitamins. We need B vitamins because they, st they are important for metabolism, they're important for utilization of the foods we eat, but they're also important for cell division. So those, one of the things we know is immune cells need to divide very rapidly. What happens if you've ever been exposed to a particular bacteria or virus, 
um, you know, and your body's responded to it. After the threat of that bacteria virus is gone, you know, most of those immune cells disappear. The body destroys them. It just keeps a few, maybe 10 or 12 of those hidden away. They're stored so that uh, the next time we're exposed, they're already there. That's, you know, that's, uh, that's, the, um, that's what makes us immune to them. And what happens is we're exposed to bacteria or viruses. Well, those things replicate very rapidly. So those very few cells become millions of cells in a mere 24 to 48 hours. Those, 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 those few immune cells that were the memory cells that retain the memory of that bacteria virus go from just a few in the body to millions in the body in just a matter of you know a day or two. So they divide very rapidly and they're going to be metabolically very, very active. We need antioxidants, both the water soluble and the fat soluble, because immune cells create lots of free radicals. And what do I mean by that? Well, immune cells have little organelles that actually engulf the bacteria and viruses, and then they kind of irradiate them with free radicals. That's how they destroy them. So, you know, we're creating a lot of free radicals when, when those immune cells are destroying the bacteria and viruses or they're destroying the cancer cells. So we need antioxidants to protect those immune cells. Trace minerals, especially iron and zinc, those are required for important enzymes in the immune system. We need vitamin A. Vitamin A is important for cell differentiation. And, you know, so we talked about those resonant memory cells, but the other amazing property of our immune system is that you can start with some relatively undifferentiated immune cells and they can differentiate. They can take on the characteristics that they need to fight off a completely new virus and bacteria that they've never seen before. So we need vitamin A for that process. Vitamin D, uh, and that's something that we didn't know a whole lot about until a few years ago. But um, we now know that resistance to colds and flu correlates with vitamin D levels in the bloodstream. And we actually think, you know, it, it used to be that we thought of when well, we get colds and flu in the winter, but it's all those drafts that we're exposed to, that cold air, or the, when we get chills, that's, that's what's bound to have depleted our immune system. Science has told us that those things really don't matter. You can get chills, you can get cold, but that's not going to increase your risk of developing colds and flu, but it may very well be the low vitamin D levels because the sun is lower in the sky if you live in northern areas in particular. In many cases, the, the weather, you know, you just don't have the sun exposure that we did earlier and earlier, you know, in, in summer and, and, and maybe spring and fall if you're in, um, if you're in southern locations. Protein, we need high quality protein, but we don't need a lot of fat, cholesterol, and omega-3 fatty acids. They're important for modulating the immune system, making sure that it does its job, but making sure that it doesn't get out of kilter and we start to get autoimmune diseases or allergies. Now, we don't need mega doses of any of those things. We just need to make sure that we're getting enough. So with that as a background, we talked about all of the holistic things that we need. We talked about the nutrients our body needs. What do I recommend in terms of nutrition? We start with the vitalizer because you've got all the B vitamins. You've got, the, you've got all the antioxidants in balance. You've got the trace minerals. You've got the omega-3 fatty acids. Um, and it's designed for optimal delivery of all of those nutrients. The cinch for the protein. This is a high quality protein you need to build those new immune cells, but without the fat cholesterol. And remember, we talked about overweight and obesity weakening your immune system. So with that cinch protein, because of the leucine it contains, the cinch inch loss program is a great way to lose the weight and also to prevent that loss of muscle mass while you're losing the weight. So, that, you know, vitalizer and cinch should be our nutrition foundation for that strong immune system. 
Now, in addition to that, there's vitamin D. And I, I talked about the fact that, you know, a few years ago we didn't know how vitamin how important vitamin D was, but now we think that it's vitally important. And it turns out that somewhere around 60% of the U.S. population is deficient in vitamin D. We didn't realize that until we started measuring blood levels. So one of the ways to make sure that your vitamin D levels are, are okay is to get your blood tested. And what you're actually measuring is a metabolite of vitamin D called 25-hydroxy vitamin D. And so here are the, here are the numbers. But really what you're aiming for is greater than 30 nanograms per mil, or if they, if they happen to use the, the, the two terminologies that can be used, the nanograms per mil or the nanomoles per liter. If it's nanograms per mil that your doctor's lab uses, you're aiming for 30 nanograms or greater. If it's nanomoles per liter your doctor's lab uses, you're aiming for 75 nanomoles or greater. Um, or, you know, you can also use Shackley's vitamin D calculator just to get a pretty, pretty good idea of what your vitamin D needs are. And then if, you, if you're, you know, either the, the, if the vitamin D calculator suggests you're low and or your blood, <coughs> blood levels are low, Shackley's vitamin D3 is a great way to increase your vitamin D levels. So you may need to add anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 IU per day of vitamin D3, depending on your blood levels or depending on what the vitamin Dology quiz shows you. I don't recommend going above, above 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 a day unless your doctor is testing your blood levels and he's monitoring you on a regular basis. Because if you go above that, there is a possibility in you know, a small percentage of the population that you could develop toxicity. So, you know, if you go below 5,000, you should be under a doctor's care. And that's just the starting place. The vitalizer, the cinch, the vitamin D, if your vitamin D levels are low. And remember, 60% of Americans have low vitamin D levels, and particularly during the winter months. But then I call the next part, call in the posse because we really need to think of those bad bacteria and yeast as the outlaws in your intestine. I talked about 70% of our, of our immune system starts in the intestine. So we get these bad bacteria and yeast established in the intestine. Those, the, the, the immune system is having to spend so much energy trying to fight off those bad guys in the intestine that it weakens its ability to fight off bacteria and viruses in, in our bloodstream. So that weakens our immune system and those bad bacteria and yeast can turn the foods we eat into cancer-causing chemicals. They release toxins into our bloodstream. They cause gas and bloating, all sorts of bad stuff. Um, so you want to think of the friendly bacteria as the posse. Uh, basically, all they do is they crowd out the bad guys. Get a lot of friendly bacteria in there. There just isn't any real estate for those bad guys to get established. So because our immune system doesn't have to expend its energy fighting off them, they actually strengthen our immune system and reverse the bad health effects of the bad bacteria and viruses. So this is where you might want to use Optiflora. You've got the bifidus and lactobacillus, the friendly bacteria. You've got the triple, triple encapsulation process that protects them from stomach acid and guarantees 90% delivery. 500 million bacteria delivered to the intestine. And you know, you can find some of these uh, friendly bacteria supplements nowadays where they talk about billions of bacteria instead of millions, but they're not encapsulated. They're not protected. So only a tiny fraction of them actually make it to the intestine. And of course, if you're taking Vitalizer, that Optiflora is, is part of the Vitalizer. And for kids, for children, there's the multi, the, the Incredivites. That contains lactoferrin. That's actually a protein found in mother's milk. But what it does is it enhances the absorption of iron, and that helps to strengthen the immune system. But it also suppresses the growth of bad bacteria in the intestine. And the Incredivites also contains a 600 IU of vitamin D3, which is what the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends for kids. 
And finally, let's talk about supercharging your immune system. So, you know, this is, this is where, of course, we're talking about neutrophiron here. But the, the story behind neutrophiron is, is fascinating. It starts with Dr. Yasushi Kojima. He was an immunologist. That means that's a scientist who studies the immune system. He was a, and a professor in Japan. He shared the Nobel Prize for discovering interferon. Now, what is interferon? Well, um, it's a powerful, you know, what they did is they went on and they used interferon. They created a genetically modified form of interferon, um, a genetically engineered, rather, form of interferon, and they use it as a drug. And when you do it that way, it's a powerful stimulant immune system, but it's not under the body's control. It has major, significant side effects. So Dr. Kojima had a vision. He wanted to develop a nutraceutical product that would stimulate the body to produce its own interferon naturally and not have any side effects. This was really a quest. When you think about it, he, what he did is he, he assembled an expert research team who worked for more than 40 years. You know, that's a scientific lifetime. They tested over 200 herbal formulations to f select the four ingredients that were most effective at maximizing the body's production for the pharaoh. So they started with 200, then ended up with four. And those are the ingredients that we have on our neutrophilon. You know, this product's based on sound science, was based from, supported by cell culture experience, experiments, four published clinical trials, and then among other things, they show that it reduces allergy symptoms. So it's not, when, 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 you're, when you're allowing the body to produce the interferon naturally, when that, in, when that interferon is under the body's own control, it's not just a stimulant of the immune system. It really harmonizes the immune system. So it keeps it from getting overstimulated. It reduces allergy symptoms. But when the body's under attack, say hepatitis C virus, um, and that actually should say it reduces hepatitis C virus by one third in a month. But that is amazing. Uh, if, anybody, if, any, if anybody knows anything about hepatitis C, they know that it's a very difficult to treat infection. Even with the most powerful drugs, a one-third reduction in a single month is a pretty mean feat. And doing it completely naturally without any side effects, that's huge. So what does what does neutrophilin do? Well, it maximizes the body's ability to produce interferon. And we can think, you know, think of interferon as a conductor of the immune system, kind of what I was talking about a minute ago. So it controls and optimizes all the components of the immune system when our body's under attack. So that would be the fortissimo. If you've ever seen a conductor conducting a, a sympathy, symphony, you know, when you get to the fortissimo part, um, you know, that would be, that's one of the things a conductor does. But then the parts of the symphony where you need to quiet the orchestra drown the pianissimo. And so what happens, once that immune challenge disappears, you get the pianissimo and the conductor dampens the immune system so it doesn't remain overactive. You don't get the um, autoimmune diseases, the allergic type responses. Now, interferon also calls those natural killer cells into action. And natural killer cells do exactly what it sounds like they would do. They execute, they kill the bacteria, viruses, cancer cells. This little picture here, that little red thing in the center, that's a cancer cell. And those things that are kind of, you can see those orange cells on either side attacking it, those are the killer cells. They're about to destroy that cancer cell. Interferon also increases the number and activity of macrophages. So let's think about what macrophages are. Um, they're the, we can think of them as the attack infantry units of the immune system. They destroy invading bacteria and viruses, cancer cells before they can become tumors. I like to think of them as little Pac-Man with teeth because they just gobble up the bacteria and viruses, cancer cells. Um, but they're also the sentries of the immune system. They watch out for 
those invading cells or they watch out for the cancer cells are always on guard and when they find them they send out proteins we call them cytokines that activate the other cells of the immune system and bring them around so that they can attack those those invading bacteria viruses cancer cells whatever they are and finally they're the garbage men of the immune system because after the whole the whole battle is done the cancer cells have been destroyed, bacteria and viruses have been destroyed. They remove the cellular debris and they clear the battlefield. Now, the thing to understand is this is something that's actually proprietary to Shackley. It was patented by Yamanuchi. That's the company that Dr. Kojima worked for. But Shackley's purchased worldwide distribution rights. We're the only company in the world that can distribute this particular um, immune building uh, immune building pro product you know and there's some companies out there when they talk about immunity they talk about they use the term bioactive polysaccharides polysaccharides is just a name for long chains of sugars bioactive means that these are long chains of sugars that are biologically active they stimulate the immune system and yes there's some other companies out there that have immune products with bioactive polysaccharides but if you look at neutrophiron it has more of those than any of the other companies out there so basically I recommend I start out my recommendations with vitalizer cinch and neutrophiron to give you the nutrients your immune system needs the friendly bacteria that your body, that your intestine needs, the omega-3 fatty acids to normalize your immune system, and then I add to it, I recommend adding to it the neutrophilin because that supercharges your immune system. You never know when you're going to need to fend off those killer bacteria and viruses, and you need to be ready to wipe out those cancer cells every single day of your life. Now there are a couple of other products to consider. One would be the defend and resist complex. That's your echinacea, um, and that's a, that's an herb that's been around for a long time. But it's one if you use it in short term, um, it will stimulate. It will strengthen the immune system. It also has a couple of other ingredients: the black elderberry and larch, and zinc, which helps support immune function as well. But echinacea is really the the main ingredient here. And you've probably seen some controversy recently about echinacea. Is it or is it not effective? Well, the important thing to understand is that echinacea is an occasional use herb. If you use it every single day, its effectiveness wears off. Now, that's been known for years, but there are many people who just completely ignore that and design their experiments, you know, inappropriately. So, echinacea will not prevent colds. You kind of know that because when, you do, when you're taking a supplement to prevent something, you're taking it on a daily basis, day after day after day. Well, we already know that the biological effective, effectiveness of, new, of, of echinacea wears off after about a couple of, you know, 10 days, a couple of weeks. And then you got to wait, go off it for a week to 10 days before you start it up again. So you can't take it on a daily basis to prevent colds. So, you know, all those studies that are coming up negative and saying echinacea doesn't prevent colds, well, of course it doesn't. That's, you know, you can't take it on a daily basis. It's not going to be active. But it also means it has no place in a multivitamin. There are companies out there, you know who they are, that advertise uh, that they that this is a, that their multi is great for preventing colds because it has echinacea in it. Well, again, you take a multivitamin on a daily basis. And so, you know, the question is, do they actually not know better or, or do those companies not care? Garlic complex, uh, that's nature's antibiotic. Um, it was actually the most widely, widely used for treatment of bacterial infections and that sort of thing before we developed antibiotics. Um, now, it, you know, again, there's a lot of question about whether garlic's effective. Well, you know, the FDA has, the FDA has actually looked at garlic supplements out there 
And what they found is most garlic supplements lack active ingredients. And that's because the, the single best way to actually make a garlic su supplement odorless is to remove the active ingredients. Very effective. No odor. No active ingredients. Why take it? But what Shackley did is an entirely different approach. What they've done is they, they take the precursor and they combine that with an enzyme which is only going to be released when that, when that capsule gets to the intestine. And that releases the active ingredient, something called allicin, and all of the other antibiotic ingredients that come from garlic are derived from allicin. That's the way garlic cloves work. If you pick up a clove of garlic, it has only a very faint odor. It's not until you crush it and release the enzyme that it, that it actually starts to break down uh, the, alan, the alanin and create the allicin. So that's, let's just kind of summarize here. Take care of your immune system, and it's going to take care of you. You know, we really want a holistic approach. Weight control, diet, exercise, sleep, stress management, all of those things are important. But the right supplement program can really make a difference because we need those nutrients to keep our immune system in tip-top shape as well. And so, you know, if you want to keep your colds and flu at bay this winter, talk to the person who invited you to this webinar. So, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Steve. Thanks so much. Uh, the new, the new to fear on really is, uh, I, I think, in the last few years, we've gotten more feedback, positive feedback from some people who use only Nutriferon. It's been just amazing product for us uh, as far as the, uh, the examples. Uh, anyone have a question? Uh, we usually stay here for just a little bit. If you have a question, just uh, type it in there where it says questions and uh, I'm sure Steve will be uh, happy to answer it for you. <laughs>